Lowrider Live Show. Ending 100. That's right. Go ahead and go to TLRLS.com. That stands for The Low Rider Live Show. Show. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a special show for everyone, Holmes. I told you, I told you, I told you, I told you, say. One day it would happen. One day it One would day. happen. You know, uh, the Vatu inspired me to uh, do what I do best to say. You know, project my voice into the way it's supposed to, like a man to say. We got the legend. Legendary Bato himself is Mr. Popeye Severa, aka Carlos from Blood in Blood Out, eh? Popeye. <laughs> Carlos, what's your last name, Carlos? My last name is Carrasco. 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 I like it. Car- Carlos Carrasco. Yeah, me pica, por eso me rasco. Nice. <laughs> nice. Now, we were talking off the air, man, about your, how you started up. You said you got here in 1990. To LA, I got it to LA in 1990. Yeah. Did you study uh, acting some uh, before you, you know, got famous? Not famous, doing your thing. Did you go? Yeah. To yeah, yeah. Where'd you go? Where'd you study? Oh my God, I went to college. Which you know, and I went here? to I went to a place in uh, Missouri called Stevens College. A Panama guy in Missouri. Panama guy in Missouri. Panama in Missouri. But there's a punchline because the scholarship was to an all women's college. Nice. What? Yes, sir. Yeah, man. But you know they had a theater department. They needed guys, so they had these special acting scholarships. And uh, when I went there, there were eight of us and two thousand of them. That's wow. crazy. Uh, so how many? How, how many did you uh, have? I, uh, I can't say that. Man. He was tagging and bagging. Yeah, right. How did that, that change your life? That's uh, that is a ratio. How old were you? That 18? is a ratio. No, no I, was, uh, no, I was twenty. Twenty. Yeah, I was twenty. Wow, good times. Yeah, yeah. Twenty yeah. years old. So you were like in your prime. Right. Yeah, man. Oh, how many kids you got then? <laughs> <laughs> that you know of. I just say. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> okay, so you studied in Missouri. Yeah, and then you got your chops. You, you do a theater work over there too, or would you? No. Yeah, no. I, I was a theater major. That's theater what I, Okay. Yeah, I studied theater. I, I got my degree, and then uh, you know, I. I and you moved to LA on a whim, or somebody told you I had connections? Or no, already? I went to New York first. Oh. You know, NYC. That, yeah. Back in that day, that was like if you were going to be a true actor, you had to go and do theater, man. And so I moved to New York, and uh, I did that. I I spent a good while there doing a lot of theater. I did a little bit of Broadway. I did some regional theater, you know, worked a city. Did you ever do Shakespeare? I do a lot of Shakespeare. Wow, that's an actor right yeah, there, yeah, brother. Right. Yeah. Not like your friends you bring from yeah. acting class. Uh, those uh, uh, you got a real actor right now. I no, I mean, it. now it can be told, man. I mean, you know, because that really was my training, was like to do classical theater. Really? Edition. Yes, sir. I am a, I am a bona fide. You can't tell. I oh, am yeah. a bona fide classical actor. And then when I hit New York, I was like, all right, watch out, because here I come, man. I'm right. saying, you know, I'm going to be doing my Hamlet and stuff. And I couldn't get arrested. Because I would go to auditions and stuff and go into the whole classical mode and shit. And they were like, what, what? You know, because they wanted, they wanted the down thing. They wanted right. the urban thing. Especially in the 1990s. NWA was coming out straight out of comp and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. The rap scene was blowing up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So they didn't, they didn't want an ethnic guy sounding like that. Right. So I had to relearn. You know, and so because it was New York, New York is, you know, heavy Puerto Rican, Dominican, that kind of stuff like that. So I had to learn how to talk like that. You know, I had I had to, I had to go into Louis Guzman mode, you know, <laughs> hey, my brother, what you saying? Blah, blah, blah. And by the way, I know Louis, I worked with him back okay. in the day, back in New York, man, you know, and because uh, he started out in theater, too. He was doing theater in the Lower East Side of New York or Loisaida, as you call it, when you live in New York. Right. So I got the whole Puerto Rican thing down, man. And then suddenly I started getting hired. You know, because it was like bad guy time and all that kind of stuff. And then I got it going on. And then at one point I decided to come out to L.A. And then I come out to L.A. And then it's like, now I got to learn how to be a vato. (laughs) (laughs) It's really hard. Now you're Mexican. I had to retrain because in L.A. it's all about, you know, Mexican, American and stuff like that. And, uh, well... The name of your show. The Low Rider. The Low Rider. Yeah, you know, and I got to I'll tell you a story about Blood In, Blood Out. I got, I was, I was here a couple of years. No, my first year. 
And then my agent calls up and says, hey, we have an, uh, we have an appointment for you, man. It's great. You're going to go meet Taylor Hackford, you know, who's directing the film. Okay. And I'm like, oh, okay, fine. It says, uh, well, what is the project? It says, this thing called Blood In, Blood Out. I'm like, okay, well, and, and we're sending you the script. So they send me the script, and I read it, and I'm like, no. I'm not gonna do this. Are you serious? Yeah. Really, dude? I'm like, I'm a classical actor. What are you talking about? I'm a about? thespian. I'm a thespian. <laughs> what do you know? Because the first thing I read was like the the prison sequence. Right. Uh, yeah. The, Give me the chon chon. Yeah. yeah. Classic. And I'm like, no, I don't think so. I'm not. I don't want to do that. I pass. And they're like, no, but you know, you gotta go and you gotta. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do it. You know, I'm 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 gonna move on. And I did. I didn't go. Really? Yeah. And then months went by. And then they call me again. They go, you know, they still haven't cast that part, man. And you really should go and see because, you know, it's Taylor Hackford, man. You know, and, you know, it's like, he's a big director and stuff. I'm like, no, when you first got offered, was it for any role or specifically Popeye? It was for Popeye. Okay, it go was ahead, to go on for Popeye. Apparently, he was having a, a hard time. time. He was having a hard role, time huh? filling that particular role. Wow, trip out, bro. Yeah, okay, yeah. So go ahead. Months later, they he, he was waiting for you, really. Uh, basically, you know? yeah. so months later, they're still at it, and, and my agent again is like, "No, you don't understand. It's Taylor Hackford. You got to go meet him." And I'm like, "Okay, fine, I'll go." And I'm like, "I'm going to go just to shut you up, okay?" And it's like, whatever. So I uh, get the appointment, whatever. I go in. I don't prepare. Usually, you don't want it really, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, no, usually, you know, like I spend a couple of days, whatever it is, I don't do anything, man. I go in and I'm cold, I, you know, to, to cold reading. Then I get there and I meet Taylor and he's the sweetest guy. And he's like, oh, hey, man, thank you for coming, blah, blah, blah. And he had Miklo with him, Damien. Okay. Because Damien was already cast. The, all those guys were already cast. Benjamin Brad, all those guys. They, all those guys were already cast. In fact, they were already cast, and they had been living in a house in, in oh East God. Los. Just waiting for you. They were, no, no, they were like, the, they were getting into it. Oh, they were getting the character. Yeah, they, they were the getting character. in character. They, they were like months into this thing already, you know? Wow. And so then I meet, and so it's Taylor and Damien. And they're like, okay, man, let's read. You know, and they had the whole script. And then we started with the first scene. And we start reading and reading and reading. And I'm doing this cold because I, you know, so I'm like, uh, 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 doing the whole Popeye thing. <laughs> and we get through one scene. And they're all like, oh, hey, that's great. That's terrific. And Damien is like, oh, man, this is so cool. This is neat. So it's like, okay, read some more. <laughs> we ended up reading through the entire script. Wow. That was a long script. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we didn't read the whole, but we read but like still, your ju- jump into long, scene. Yeah. So we read the entire thing, and I'm like, this is a weird audition, man. And about halfway through, <laughs> I started to feel bad because I'm like, oh, I am prepared, man. And they're being so nice, and they're so groovy. And, and Damien and I, you know, we, we, we were hitting it off, man. And I'm like, I wish I, you know, I, I had gotten, you know, but whatever. So I finish, I leave. A couple hours later, my agent calls up and says, listen, Taylor Hackford called. He wants to know if you'll straighten your hair. Because I have naturally curly hair. And I'm like, well, oh, so and so why? And he goes, because he wants, he wants to offer you this part. But he wants, he wants to know if you'll like totally straighten your hair. And I'm like, wow. And so, so what's the deal? Tell me the, the particulars and whatever. And it, and it was a two picture deal. You know, with the big billing and all kinds of stuff like that. And I said, well, I, I guess I could do that, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so and I jumped arm. in. Yeah. Just a little bit more. So I guess you yeah. said yes to the straightening your hair thing. Uh, yes, I did. Okay. Yeah, you know, and uh, that's that's how the thing came down. And then it turned out to be, well, you know, this role that now is like my signature. <laughs> it is. Yes. It is, man. It, it, it is. is. Dude. And, and nobody's seen my Hamlet, right? <laughs> <laughs> At least not the Cholos will be here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> my son, it's a generational thing, this movie. You know what? Yes. I, I heard they're making a part two. Yeah. Oh, it was Roger the one that said it, I guess. <laughs> well, they're trying to go into works. I, okay. Yeah. I just spent some time... Um, just about six months ago in New Mexico with Jimmy Baca. Okay. Jimmy's the writer. He wrote the thing. And um, at the time that we did shoot it, it was already, there was already a part two. Mm. In fact, we all signed a two-picture deal. We had a contract yeah, I was going to stop you on that when you said that. Two Inside deal. scoop. Yeah. No, it was always going to be two pictures. It was always going to be part one and part two. Um... And and, and, and and I remember Jimmy was really... Jimmy's a funny guy. Jimmy... Uh, I have to do a little plug for Jimmy because... Not for free. 
Jimmy's a writer, he's a poet. He's actually a poet. That's why, and a lot of that language in that movie that everybody loves so much, all of the chon chon stuff yeah. and all of that, and then the wolf tickets and shit, that's all Jimmy. Because Jimmy. Where did he grow up? LA? No, Jimmy's from New Mexico. And, and the, the Jimmy story is that he was, he came up hard. You know, the youth and the thing and the trouble or whatever, whatever. And then he got into trouble mm -hmm. uh, when he was a young man. He was doing the running drugs and stuff and whatever. And he got into a really bad situation. He got busted and he, he got sent up and he got sent up to do hard time. Oh, and Jimmy was inside for like seven years. Mm. So he's the real deal. And, and then he's. In fact, part of the reason I was uh, in New Mexico with Jimmy just now is because he's, uh, I've gotten involved in a documentary that is out now called A Place to Stand. And it's the Jimmy Santiago Baca story. Where can you see oh, it? Netflix, okay. where can you get it at? Um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I kind of got involved in supporting it. They mm -hmm. did some uh, online fundraising. Um, find out, Carlos. We'll support it to her in the show for Probably sure. Probably Google yeah, it. it. Yeah, we'll yeah. Put yeah, it on yeah. Our uh, yeah mm -hmm. A place to stand. It's the Jimmy Santiago Baca story. Because actually what happens is this young filmmaker went down. He found, because Jimmy has never stopped writing. And what he really is is a poet. You know, and he's and he's now a major, considered a major American poet. Mm. All kinds of awards and stuff like that. And this young filmmaker approached him about three years ago and said, I want to make a movie about you. You know, is that cool? And Jimmy's like, okay, fine. So this kid went down there and just followed Jimmy around for like three years, just shooting all this footage and everything like that. And now he's put it together into this really, really fine film. Oh, uh, It's got a place to stand. It's great. And so, and I got involved, a little bit involved uh, towards the tail end, you know, and helping to raise some money and stuff like that. And then it hooked me up with Jimmy again. And I went down and spent some time with him in New Mexico. Uh, I'm, tell, I'm talking, this was about six months ago. Mm -hmm. And he was talking then about... Really? Part two. Part two. Oh. Because the original part two never got shot. Because I don't know if you know the whole story about what no. happened to Blood In, Blood Out. Wait, no. wait, 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 quick question. Yeah. Uh, it's called Blood In, Blood Out, but why Bound is by it, Honor. Yeah, why is it also called Bound by Honor? I got to tell Kate. I got to tell you the story. Here's the thing, and this is the irony of it. Um... When that movie first came out, it was a huge flop. Right? It, it just went nowhere. It made no money. It was a disaster at the box office. Why? Well, here's what happened. Um, something that's very common in Hollywood is that nobody will make a pirate movie for 20 years. And then all of a sudden, somebody says, hey, I'm going to make a pirate movie. And suddenly, there's four pirate movies right. shooting at the same time. Mm. At the time of Blood In, Blood Out, um, you know, who's like, who's going to make a movie about the gangs in East L.A. and in the prison system in California. And suddenly, boom, there's two movies. Because American Me. Mm -hmm. Right. Got shot at exactly the same time. No way. I what? thought they were years apart. No. No, no, no. The, oh, the two movies were shooting that. at exactly the same time. And if you're familiar with both of them, you see that there are, over, there are similarities. You right. know, they're, they're, they're oh, the, totally. the San Quentin thing, yeah. the, the white guy who becomes the leader, the which Mr. actually Mom, yeah. is a yes, story. story. All of that is real. Yeah. Uh, it turns out that one of the, as happens in Hollywood, you know, writers move around. And so there's a guy that had worked on both screenplays. So, like, his work kind of over spilled over into both. Now, Jimmy, Taylor brought Jimmy in kind of late in the game when there was already, like, a working script. And so what we shot as Blood In, Blood Out was, like, the final polish with Jimmy's language on it. But the two movies were shooting at exactly the same time. In fact, it was kind of funny because we used to kind of trip over each other. We'd get to a location, and then the security guys were like, oh, yeah, we were doing security last week for the other movie. And, you know, it's like, what? And sometimes we'd be at a location before them, or, or sometimes we'd be following neck and neck. The two movies wow. are shooting. Wow. wow. I love this. And they're both. I know, it's very captivating. Yeah, and they're both kind of roughly about the same thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So then what happens now? Um, uh, Eddie Olmos was directing. Um, American Me. American Me. So he finished. He went into post. He cut his movie. He got it done. And he released it. So it came out first. Mm. You know, and now what happens is like the, the the one that comes out first gets all the buzz and the heat. And, and the somebody thing. died from that movie. Uh, and so yeah, there was that's a whole yeah. other thing. Yeah, yeah but that's still, another story. It still made it get yeah. bigger. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The yeah. Lord, somebody, somebody got shot. Yeah, uh, yeah. Although we had a drive by in in when we were shooting in East LA. No we were, way. Yeah, we were doing a night shoot one night, and they came by and pop, 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 pop. <gasps> 
and uh, and drive by and and the caterer quit. <laughs> <laughs> I would There's some real gangsters like, you know, in no, that movie. Because that's where they shot. They shot where, like, you know, where you set up the tents to eat and everything. Oh, okay. You know, and, and it, it was kind of a weird drive-by because they came right after the meal had br finished and everybody was back on the set. So it was just the caterer cleaning up and stuff like that. And suddenly these guys come by, bah, 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 and the dude's like, oh, I'm out of here. <laughs> it's oh, like, you know, you, wow. you, you know, that's it. But anyway, the thing is what happens. Uh, so American Me gets done, it gets wrapped, mm -hmm. it, gets, it, it gets released. It comes out and it gets reviews and whatever, whatever. Meanwhile, Taylor, who I love to death, is a perfectionist. So he's cutting and he's editing and he's splicing and everything. And he, I'm giving you all the inside stuff now. Taylor's first cut was four hours. Yes! <laughs> I have the director's cut. It's the longest DVD I've ever seen in my life. Oh, and that's the DVD. I'm telling you, the rough cut the rough cut was four hours and 45 minutes oh long. Oh, my God. So, You're like, It's honey, a miniseries. Yeah. That's yeah. the two movies right there. That is the, the two that, movies. That's your two movies, right? Yeah. So then, the, 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 so then it gets into the thing with the, the studio because the studio says, like, no, no, dude, you don't understand. We want a two-hour movie. And Taylor's like, no, you don't understand. <laughs> I want a three-hour movie. Mm -hmm. So they're like, no, well, what are we about, about, about? So then they get into this dance of, like, okay, we're going to cut a two-hour version and test it. And they, they would do that and hand out the little cards and stuff like that. And it's like, uh, you know, so then, then they would cut a three hour version and test that. And that went on for months. Wow. You know, back and forth, back and forth, because the studio is two hours. Taylor is like, no, three hours. And this goes. Meanwhile, they keep calling us back in. Because when you take, when you try to cut almost five hours into <laughs> two hours, <laughs> A lot of information ends up on the floor, right? And so, and the audience gets confused, like, Konya, why did he do that?" You know, and stuff. So the solution was to loop more lines. You know what looping is yeah. when you go in and you do more you dialogue, feel, yeah, you know, over the stuff. Yeah. yeah. But then they would have to. It was it was kind of funny because they would call us in, like, "Dude, you got to say these lines," you know. But you can do say them in this scene, and then it would be like, "Okay." They had to find places, so we ended up looping a lot of back of the head shots, because it's like nobody can see your mouth. So you know we're gonna cut to like, and when at the back of your head, then you say, "Oh yeah," because he first came to California, but I gotta. Oh! <laughs> oh! It's like a disclaimer on a commercial at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. Says all that yeah. stuff. Do the legal, yeah, yeah. You know? And so we were like, it was crazy, and we kept, this kept up for months. We started calling it year in year out you know because it's like oh we're gonna work the, the movie became a career you know because usually you go you work for three months and you're done it's like jaws yeah and this we're, we, we're, this thing kept going and going and going uh, to the point where i'll tell you that the very very last scene in the movie okay you know where it's like jesse borrego and benjamin bratt and, and they're the, in the bridge the, uh, yeah and the bridge and the, the, the river owner. and yeah. stuff like that that scene was shot a year after we finished principal photography because by that point they were trying to figure out how to how to make this cut <clears throat> taylor had won the three-hour battle but they needed to to kind of end it you know you know g g make it round make it into yeah. one movie that would stand on its own so they wrote that last scene and shot it a year later that's why jesse has no hair in that oh. last scene you this see really these, you see inside. you see these pearls I'm laying on you now. Uh, okay, no, because Jesse was in New York by then doing a play. All right. In fact, he was doing a play called Wojtek, which is a German expressionist play, and he was playing the lead character when he had his sh his head shaved off. So, so they brought Jesse in and said, I don't have any hair. And they said, that's okay. We'll put it in the line. <laughs> we'll put it in the line. Put everything in the line. Yeah, we'll spill You're it right. out right there. Yeah. Loop it in. Because you but won't get it. Now, the thing, now we get to the reality. By the time the movie was finally finished, mm -hmm. like in a way that, you know, Taylor wanted it and stuff like that, and he won the, the battle of the three hours and stuff like that, we're a year later now. And, and American Me has happened and all this kind of stuff. Came but, and went. Yeah, but the whole thing about the, the East L.A. gang movie, like, okay, that had happened, you know. Now it's time. Now they're ready to release the movie. And it was still blood in, blood out. And then guess what happened? The L.A. riots. 
Remember the LA riots? Yeah. 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 Okay. And the whole city's on fire yeah. and, the thing, and the city's going to burn and stuff. So, so then the studio goes, whoa, okay. We are not throwing this movie out there right. into that atmosphere. So that pulls it back for a while. Oh. You know, so they let a few more months go by. Then they're like, okay, maybe it's time to release this movie again. So now let's start testing it again. Low Rider Live Show. Ending. 100.